Hey, everybody. Thanks for tuning in on this week's episode. I will talk to you about uh, how do people live on a Bitcoin standard? Uh, I would like to know because I think it's like impossible. Um, uh, I'll get into that. Um, then also my Bitcoin mining plan that uh, I have uh, in the works. Um, you know, I'll just give you some sparse, sparse details about that. Um, but then also uh, what's going on, why I've been so busy and crazy. This is, uh, yeah, the Movies Plus Film Festival has been driving me uh, up a wall. I mean, in a good way, keeping me busy. But um wanted to give you an update because I keep recording these on a Friday, even though I plan on recording them on Monday. That's what my life has been like for the last month. So uh, we'll get into all of that. But as always, um, well, did you guys hear... There's more liquidations happening. I think we all know that. So get your coins, take them off the exchange and put them onto your Bitbox O2 hardware wallet from Shift Crypto. Go to shiftcrypto.ch slash Bitcoin Made Simple and you'll use the promo code Bitcoin Made Simple to get 5% off. Please take your coins off the exchange. This is not a drill, folks. Do it, do it, do it. Um, also, upstream data. Uh, they'll probably be involved in my mining operation that I'm ta- uh, going to talk about here. But also, uh, you know, get yourself a black box. You can fit two miners in there. And then that <laughs> noise all of a sudden goes to it. <laughs> and you can't hear it in the rest of the house. Um, so you want to get one of those if you're mining at home. And also, it's great because you can have it in the house. But if you have it out of the house, you can mine outdoors, pump that heat straight outside. And uh, it's weatherproof and, you know, just throw a padlock on it and you're good to go. So thanks to Upstream Data, go to upstreamdata.ca. And then as always, Movies Plus. If you are one of the people that have not used the Movies Plus promo code, you are missing out because they're flying off the shelves. The digital shelves were stocked with promo code Corey, C-O-R-Y. And that gets you a whole year of Movies Plus for $24. Now, let me tell you, There's a lot of people, actually the majority, vast majority of people pay $6 a month for Movies Plus. So that would be in four months, you would pay $24 or you can use the promo code Corey to get $6 off and it will be $24 for the whole year. So um, I'm taking money out of my pocket and putting it back into the customers. Whether that's a good business plan, we shall find out. our business model, but, uh, you know, so far so good. Seems to be working. We are cash flow positive, just need to be more positive and get bigger positive <laughs> going forward. Um, but, uh, yeah, use the promo code, Corey. I, again, am always stunned by how many people use the promo code because it's just like, really? Like, I mean, I know, like, I mean, I can see how many people listen. So I'm like, oh, you know nobody's like people didn't leave you know it's a little bit less than what it was in the uh the boon of you know like the the big burst of the uh the bitcoin market but yeah i mean you guys still listen and so i know that there's a lot of you that you are using it it's actually a pretty high percentage of like number of codes used versus number of people that listen so you're if you haven't used it yet you're in the minority and you don't want to FOMO buy into Bitcoin. You want to just buy when you're ready and how much you can afford. But you do want to FOMO buy a Movies Plus subscription because we've got a ton of cool stuff. That's what I'm going to get into first. I'll start with that and then I'll motor through the Bitcoin stuff. Um, Because as always, here's I am at the end of the week trying to to get this in. uh, I swear to God, every week it is. You guys know if you were listening, I was releasing these on Mondays for the longest time. Um, And then all of a sudden uh, the business just kept picking up and more work and more work. And here we are three weeks in a row recording on a Friday, which I have to record and then get out a Z door and go coach a football game. So um, anyways, and that's uh, where my Steeler stuff as usual, you guys, if you look at the thumbnails on YouTube, I'm like, I realized how much sports stuff I wear because every day, it's just like the same picture, just me wearing a different sports memorabilia or sports attire. Um, 
so yeah the movies plus film festival if you aren't familiar we are running that right now and um we have i believe 16 films playing in it um and the winner of the best will give be giving cash prizes to the following categories best short best feature best documentary um uh, i'm actually interviewing peter on monday um about his follow the money series uh peter mccormick that is in the festival that premieres i believe next thursday um so you want to check that out but we'll also just have it on the platform and my interview with him will be up there um and you can vote for it if you go to movies plus direct dot com slash film festival you can vote for which film you want to win uh which category so um it's been keeping me really busy because it's a lot of coordination um i mean i've gone to film festivals all over the world and i've always not envied the people that run them um because they look like they have a lot of energy at the very beginning of the week. And by the end of the week, they look like they have just been through war. Um, and they're just like, you could be standing two feet in front of them. They won't even see you. Uh, so, cause it's just a, it's a ton to coordinate even this little, you know, online film festival. I don't have to manage venues, anything like that. I just have to manage people and assets and, and, um, and do all these interviews. Um, I did have a little uh, help with uh, three of the interviews done by um, Rebecca Smith, who uh, she's known as the film festival doctor. Um, and she, uh, I've done work with her in the past. Um, so she helped out, uh, interviewed some, she submitted some films and three of her films did get in, um, which I wasn't surprised because uh, she obviously represents good stuff. Um, but uh, yeah, I had to do a bunch of interviews for this and watch a bunch of movies um sadly you know a lot of the movies you just have to throw right out the window i mean it's just the way it is uh you know the, there are bad movies that are made um so it's not like we just we didn't out to preface it with this we didn't just take anything um we are very prestigious here at the movies plus film festival uh, that's like the third time i've used z uh instead of the um Maybe it's because I'm actually related to Klaus Schwab. I don't know, um, but yeah, we we we're pretty we were pretty picky about what films we took and what ones we uh, we accepted. Um, but you know, like going through it, like I had to watch a lot, and a lot of it, like you know, right off the bat, you could just tell production quality just through it. You know, it was like, sorry, thanks for submitting, thanks for submitting. Um, but then when we got down to the nitty gritty, it was like, okay, well now I have to watch these and figure out which ones meet the justifications um and so we had to slim it down and we didn't just slim it down because uh, like kind of feel bad some of them we have more quality ones that could get in but what i wanted to do was schedule it i i wanted to make it a nice tight schedule um and like at a film festival you could be playing stuff you know premiering all throughout the day every day for 10 days um but on the app I was the only one that was really running the back end of this because I couldn't pull res more resources from our company to do it. So it's just, I was like, well, this is, I want to do this. I think it's going to be fun. So I got to do it. Um, and uh, yeah, I just don't have the, the, the bandwidth to handle all that. But uh, then, so I had to watch a lot of movies and then I had to interview a good number of them. So I think I've done, seven interviews at this point roughly six maybe um you know sometimes with just one filmmaker sometimes with the whole team um and it's i i had to tell them all ahead of time i said obviously i watched your film but i've watched a lot of films so forgive me if i'm off on the details a little bit but um you know it's just been it's been fun because it's it, it's been energizing to talk to these creatives that you know to to hear their stories of how they came up with the film and everything actually you know i might take those and put those out for you guys i'll pa i'll package them into like two groups and i'll put them out for you guys and um uh be i think interesting i mean obviously other than the peter mccormick one there's no bitcoin connection but uh i think you guys would like it because they're pretty interesting it's always fun to hear about independent filmmakers how they made the movie the challenges they faced and everything um so yeah so anyways uh 
I just I've watched a lot, a lot of movies. I like it a lot. If you like uh, Dumb and Dumber, you'll know what that was. Um, so it's been good. I've had a, a it's been a fun festival so far. Uh, we have a Batman movie premiering tonight called Night in Lockdown. It was a short film made by the comedian Joel Osborne, and uh, Joel made the film, uh, you know, on his own dime, not for money or anything. And it is it's a legit like he's got a legit bat suit and everything. Um, but it is the story of Batman during lockdown where Batman is real COVID has really bothered him because there's no crime to fight anymore. Um, so you will enjoy it. It's pretty funny. I know we're all sick of the COVID stuff, but, uh, this was a fresh take on it and very fun, uh, to watch. So, uh, check it out. You don't even actually have to subscribe to watch it. You can just watch it for free because Joel is not monetizing it. So it means I can't monetize it either. Um, Bitcoin mining plan. So really excited about this. I have a been in touch with a lot of people. Um, and I think I finally have uh, a decent opportunity lined up to mine off of stranded natural gas. Um, what I'm curious about with this is what this does to my life going forward. Um, like how much, you know, how much does this Bitcoin mining operation take over my life? Uh, cause I'll just be blunt with you guys. It's like, I love making movies. That's what I want to do that. I, I like movies. I mean, I obviously love Bitcoin. Um, but you know, movies plus is fun. It's, it, it is also exhausting. Um, in this Bitcoin mining venture, I know will take a lot of energy. Um, so I don't know. I mean, it's just one of those things. You have to be open to where is this going to take me going forward? You know, it, it might end up being like a one-off. You do this one venture and, and it does well. And, you know, you're happy you did it and you move on. But I'm like also thinking about like, well, fast forward like three years from now. Like what if I'm like not even a doing anything in the movie industry and just like work in the work in the fields setting up natural gas mining operations and stuff which to be honest with you sounds really fun so i i do it um but i don't know um so i'm learning a lot about mcf which is the you know thousand cubic feet of natural gas the price of it um what's the the Henry Hubbard, let's, let me Google it real quick. He Googles the price of gasoline. The Henry Hub natural gas price. I don't know why it's called Henry Hub. Henry Hub natural gas price is at a current level of $2.50. Um. I don't know why it's called Henry Hub. It's the weirdest thing. Let me Google it while we're doing this. Why is it called Henry Hub? Should be really, really interesting. I'll read straight from Henry Hub is so named for its location in the Henry Hamlet of Erath. What? No. What? which was named after the Henry High School that stood there until damaged by flooding and storm surge from Hurricanes Ike in 2008 and Rita in 2005, though the natural gas facilities suffered minimal damage. Uh, okay, Henry Hub is a gas pipeline in Erath, Louisiana. The reason I said what, because at first I thought, what in the hell is Erath. So no offense to everyone that lives in Erath, Louisiana, but I thought I was like reading some kind of Lord of the Rings, Middle Earth type thing, or thought maybe I was like becoming dyslexic or having a seizure and, and uh, seeing the word Earth as Erath, but nope, that's what it is. Anyways, I've been learning about the Henry Hub natural gas uh, spot price and uh yeah, I mean, there's there's stranded wells everywhere. If you are one of them that owns a stranded well, contact me and I will hook you up. 
um, you know, the the price of natural gas can fluctuate, but there's a big problem if you have stranded gas because you can't get it out to anyone. You can't get it out to any consumers. Um, so this, uh, you know, I've talked to a couple wells, you know, around the area. Um, and, uh, you know, they all have like similar story, you know, the, the gas companies decided, Hey, it's, you've heard this story. I mean, it, it, the gas company is like, Hey, it's not worth our money to build a pipeline. It's not going to be profitable by the time we tap that well out. So there's people just sitting on them and they're going to earn a dime, but this way they can earn many dimes. Um, and the, the cool thing is like, I've had, I've had well owners ask me in two different ways. I've had one of them, well, not one. I've had some of them say, you know, ask about Bitcoin and yeah, I'd like to save some in Bitcoin. Can't get paid that way. I've had some of them say, I just want us dollars. I don't want to know anything about the Bitcoin. And I was like, that's okay too. We can do both. Um, so it's pretty cool. Um, and I think, I'll be probably working with I'm hoping to partner with uh with some Bitcoin friends on this. You you probably know who you are if you're listening. Um I don't wanna say anything out loud and blow up their spot, you know. But uh yeah, what the heck? It's uh it's you know Bob. Bob has been on the show. Uh, Bob Burnett, by the way, has been on the show two, three times. Um, barefoot mining. Uh so yeah, we're we're working together to try and put this together uh and it's it'll be interesting i'm i'm looking forward to it and i forward to it and i'm really hoping that uh, we pull this off because guess what you can i mean they'll put the they you know i i know how to do this too but you can stream this the sats right into a wallet so you know you set the percentages of who gets what percentage of sats that are mined per day and those just flow um, and it's a, it's a beautiful thing and they have the business set up prospectus to, you know, put it in a good format and, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty, it, it seems pretty great. Uh, and it's going to be really good for the investors. So, uh, all, I mean, I guess, I don't know if you're someone that's interested in getting into a, like, you know, semi commercial mining industry uh you know this isn't going to be something like uh this isn't going to be a compass mining or anything like that this is like a smaller thing a thing that you know uh we're doing creating an entity and, and going with it so uh if you are interested i guess hit me up uh but uh, as bob has said it tends to go fast uh the money tends to go to come in pretty quick because people were like oh yeah that looks great um, I mean, it's ridiculous ROI. It is a ridiculous ROI made me wish that I had plenty of money, my own money to put into it, but I do not, I do not have spare Bitcoin at the moment. I have what I have and I would like to not tap into it, but I am telling you what folks, I'm putting everything into movies plus because I really believe in it. So that's why I need you guys to keep supporting us there. Um, cause I think that this is important to stand up for free speech and uh make a make a difference in the world um and we'll see what happens but uh I, i'm putting my money where my mouth is um putting it all on the line so anyways oh and you so see you'll stream the sats like the business will stream the sats out and the best place you can put those is in a bitbox o2 hardware wallet that's right you know that shiftcrypto.ch Slash Bitcoin made simple. Promo code Bitcoin made simple to get 5% off. Now, the last part that I wanted to talk about was how do people live on a Bitcoin standard? Um, I'll admit, at its peak, I was a moron and I was on a Bitcoin standard completely. I mean, don't get me wrong. I don't own anything but Bitcoin, you know, and then I have like cash reserves and whatnot but like i've been telling everyone this isn't financial advice but my friendly tip would be don't put in more money than you can afford to lose don't like if you're putting money into bitcoin the best way to 
manage that and not just to like be super conservative on like the investing side, but the reason I, one of the reasons I say don't put money in that you plan on touching for the next four years, make it money that you are willing to not touch for four years. The reason being is it removes the emotion from it. I mean, it also means that you're most likely in the end of four years going to go, Oh, I'm going to keep it in here. Cause that was pretty great. Um, but it takes the emotion out of it and allows you to um, properly hodl uh, and lower your risk of making a rash decision that would be a mistake in selling your Bitcoin. Um, so, but I was on a, I was on a Bitcoin standard uh, and I tell you, I don't know how you, could, I don't know how people do it. Um, I mean, I know, I have to ask Luke about it. I saw Luke put out a video or something saying that he's doing that in El Salvador or South America, wherever he is, Central America. Um, But that's got to be impossible. I mean, you can't really have every single penny in Bitcoin and be like, I mean, I guess because like if you're living on a Bitcoin standard, you know, your fluctuate, your savings is going to fluctuate. But like, if you're having a paycheck, I mean, I guess you could do it, I guess. Um, but it, I don't know. I mean, if you have a steady flow, but for me, like an entrepreneur, it makes it really hard because, uh, you know, people go, oh, you own a streaming platform. You must be loaded, blah, blah, blah. Uh, no, I am not loaded. Uh, and second of all, um, it, I've talked about this before, but being an entrepreneur, you're unless you've reached escape velocity with your income, as an entrepreneur, you're living paycheck to paycheck. They're just bigger paychecks and less frequent, much less frequent. So, uh, you know, I don't know if any of you are familiar with this type of lifestyle. And I kind of talked about it. But it's like, it's really, it can be aggravating and drive you crazy because you're like, when's the next paycheck coming? Wow, that's a while from now. <laughs> uh, I don't, you know, sometimes I don't even know if I have the stomach for it, but some here I am. Uh, I, every year, uh, this adult league softball team I play for, uh, my one friend on the team, I think I mentioned this before, but I've been doing this for like nine years now or whatever, eight years, something. Um, on my own and every year he's always at the beginning of the season he's like how's business i'm like still going i'm not sure how but still going uh and um yeah so it's i don't know if in this scenario it's possible to live in a bitcoin standard um but that being said for the average person i don't know you should be living on a bitcoin standard um you know because if you do Let's just say, for example, you have a job and you lose that job. Let me think of a hypothetical scenario. Okay. So you were like, I don't know what the average person has, but I would think if I was working a regular like day-to-day job, I would want like six month reserves of cash to cover my butt in the event that I lost my job for one reason or the other, because it can happen for one reason or the other. It doesn't happen for any particular reason. Um, And so I would have six months cash, but if you're living on a Bitcoin standard, you might have six months of cash all in Bitcoin and that's your runway and it fluctuates violently and then what happens if at the worst possible time in your life when you lose your job through no fault of your own and mind you this is a recession and probably a depression and companies you know you need to be thankful you need to thank god or whoever you think not forcing my religion on you but thank god every day for uh, you know, every, the job you have, the paycheck you get, the ability, the pr- life you're able to provide, uh, for your family and yourself. But, um, you know, God forbid it goes away. 
then all of a sudden you go and look and you're like, oh, wait, oh, that's right. I had my six month runway all in Bitcoin and now it's half that. Well, that sucks. Now I have a three month runway or maybe you only have initially planned a three month runway. Now it's down to a month and a half and you're like, son of a bitch, I need a job now, like immediately. Um, and, uh, I mean, not that you wouldn't try to get a job immediately, but holy crap. Like, you're like, I need a job like in four weeks, like I need my first paycheck in four weeks. So, you know, I guess I'll be scrubbing toilets or whatever, but, um, yeah, I don't know. I just, I just am becoming very cautious for people. I'm like stupid bullish on Bitcoin long term. Um, I mean, even short term too. Like, it, I'm not not bullish on it in short term. But God, we were getting into a weird area there where we were like, you know, looking at you know staking to put a down payment on your house. I mean, I even considered that. That's how stupid I was. Um, thank God I didn't. The, the price of Bitcoin was like, I mean, I would have been liquidated if I had done that. That would have been so, that would have, that would have been horrible. Because what I did was I, I, I cashed out Bitcoin, put the down payment on our house. But I had seriously considered all summer long before we found the house we moved to. I was like, looking through it, thinking about doing it. And I was gonna have to stake I was gonna have to stake double what I cashed out. You know, so I cashed out X number of dollars. I was gonna have to stake double that to get that cash. And then if it, you know, dipped to the liquidation point, I could either provide collateral to keep the loan or just get wiped out. Um so there'd be multi prong approach to failure there because A, I could have been wiped out. B, it could have been at one of the companies that went under and was rehypothecating the Bitcoin and not didn't have full reserves and didn't have it all protected. And C, the governmental regulations. I mean, thankfully, I always took that part really seriously, you know, and like, you know, people don't people underestimate that, I guess. I don't know. I'm like, you know, I, I had a business partner. I kept saying, I was like, dude, like everything but Bitcoin is going to be an unregistered security. I'm telling you. and he was like no nah, i can't do that man we're seeing it we're seeing it happen left and right so yeah i don't know um so i just i don't know how people live on a bitcoin standard i mean telling like most people in the world that's another thing you we tend to think that like our financial situation is the worst that there is worst situation and everybody else hasn't figured out in life that's not true i mean most people in the world, like, I don't know the numbers, but I would say it's well above 90% are living paycheck to paycheck. So I don't know if we should go out there and tell them, hey, you should live on a Bitcoin standard. You were going to, you know, change the world and win moon and blah, blah, blah. Whenever, like, you know, the simplest thing can set a 15% dip and you're like, what? just happened to the money i just made um again so that's why i say just buy what you can afford to lose but you know you're not going to lose it if you're investing in bitcoin but make it money that you don't need for four years it's a great savings people call it a savings technology i don't know if to call that is right or wrong i don't know but it is a great saving mechanism not because of the fact that the value goes up so insanely, which it will. In four years, people will be complaining that we've dipped back down to 100000 Um, So mark my words, March 3rd, 2020, four years, 27. Jeez, you can tell I'm fried by the end of the week. It's March 3rd, 2027. By that time somebody will have complained that the price of Bitcoin crashed to a hundred K again. Um, and here we are sitting at 22 K or whatever it was at. So yeah, just it's a great savings technology or a grave, great savings engine because it encourages you to take money. Think about it this way. 
I mean, yeah, if you have 401k, stuff like that, but think about just in general, your savings. Before Bitcoin, did you ever take your savings and set it aside and plan on not spending it for a very long time? Because even if you don't have my plan of you know cash that you don't want to touch for four years, if you are buying Bitcoin and you're like a true Bitcoin maxi, you are setting aside money that you don't want to touch for a long time. You were a savings engine. You were a savings machine. Just happens to be that you're saving in the best currency possible. Um, and you know it's going to pay major dividends. That's that's great. You know that that part's that's fine. You should enjoy. You sh- you deserve it. But it is teaching you to do something. You know if you're if you're setting aside money that you don't need to touch for four years, in four years from now, Bitcoin is still sitting at twenty two thousand dollars. Even if it's down a little bit lower, whatever, you will have saved all that money. And that's money that I guarantee you, if it weren't for Bitcoin, you wouldn't have saved. So we can all thank Uncle Satoshi for teaching us the value of saving money and uh, and the value of money. So anyways, I got to run, guys. I got to coach a Little League football game, flag football. Don't worry, I don't do any of that i'm not getting my kids in concussion football um even though i love to watch it it's a shame i wish it weren't that way but uh yeah i appreciate all of you as always uh, seriously check out the film festival i think you guys will like it and you can vote if you are a customer um and then also uh yeah go to uh shift crypto.ch slash bitcoin made simple and get a hardware wallet and get your coins off the exchange with the Bitbox O2 hardware wallet. I will talk to you guys later.